We needed more compact systems that would fit in, in a business. And we've done that. 2018, my company, Origin Clear, which has been a public company for some time, built this business that creates these water systems in a box, we call it. Modular Water Systems is the brand, and it's doing fantastically. But there was still a problem because what we found out, especially during COVID when everything was going nuts, is that businesses needed help with money. If you're asking a brewery to invest in wastewater systems, they're like, I'm sorry, I'm funded to make beer, but where am I gonna find a million dollars to clean the water? I thought that was the city's job. So we realized that the way to really accelerate this is to make it a no-brainer. We come along, we say, okay, sign here, and you don't have to pay for the machine we're gonna put in, and just pay by the gallon, as you always did with the city, you just keep doing it with us. We call it water on demand, it is basically water as a service. Welcome everyone to the CEO briefing, and I see people are arriving rapidly. Uh, Keith Scruton, sometimes doing nothing is good, but not when cleaning water. <laughs> okay. Uh, Keith was re referring to the little outside of the show commentary that was because we've been starting the the, uh, the webinar early these days, um, and it's because there's been uh, some button pressing, but now we fixed it, so we are live and happy campers. All right, so with that, we will jump into the briefing, April 6th, briefing number 205, the world's new water network. All right, so with that, hey, Origin Clear in the news. So there's this um, magazine called Green Living. Here it is. And um, honoring Stuart Udall, very, very an amazing guy in Arizona. He's there with Linda Bird Johnson, looks like, showing off pieces of Arizona. So this magazine is a great little magazine about green, basically. And if we fast forward to 24, we get an article that includes us right here. Um, we're commenting on these river chemicals that um, Teflon, firefighting foams, varnishes, that sort of thing. And um, very long lasting. And also, I was commented here that it impacts reproductive health. Interestingly enough, it even increases cholesterol. So you'll find them in personal care products, nonstick cookware, fast food packaging, stain-resistant products, microwave popcorn bags, pesticides, cosmetics, paint, and water-resistant clothing. They have been getting rid of them, but they are out there. Per and polyfluoroalkyl substances, PFAS. That's a nice little hit. Okay. Here's a report from the field. Our chief engineer for modular water systems, Daniel Early at Munson Point, which is a housing development. We've been telling you for a long time that housing developments are great candidates for decentralized water treatment because obviously you can locate the, the housing development without having to worry about sewage, which can be many millions of dollars. So let's see what he's got to say. First of all, he sent me the memo here. I spent most of the afternoon today uh, at Munson Point following up on the Avera skid, which in other words, it's a, a skid-mounted system, 10,000 gallons per day, membrane bioreactor, meaning that it, it uses biology to clean the, the water. Um, I met with Jimmy Moon, who operates Munson Point, and he's very thrilled. 35-year veteran, very impressed with the autonomous function and the exceptional quality, water quality being produced. You heard that also was being stated about it, um, the other location, in Moscow, Pennsylvania, they had the same comments. And he has connections in North Texas, which is absolutely booming. And we'll cover that in the video. There are at least five high value residential and mixed use commercial developments within five minutes of Munson Point. And <clears throat> they're planning to open new lots for construction and plan to get a second of Ariskid. Texas Instruments is building a $30 billion facility in Sherman, Texas, and that will bring another 20,000 new jobs. A lot more homes, of course. He will get an end user interview, which will be great. And then we'll get a press release going because, you know, we hide our wonderful performance way too much. So I've, I've started saying to our engineers, hey, it's not enough just to make the water good. You better get some testimonials. So here we go. Good afternoon. This is Dan Early coming to you live from Munson Point located just outside of beautiful Denison, Texas, located in 
the North Texas region, just south of the Oklahoma border. I'm on site today at our Veriskid 10K MBR wastewater treatment system. This is a system that progressive water treatment through the modular water systems product line we were able to deliver this system to this particular residential development. What is really unique about this particular project is, is that it's an, a membrane bioreactor type of technology. It is our plug and play system. It is a system that as soon as it's offloaded and as soon as you connect a pipe in and a pipe out and make your power connection, you're immediately ready to water up the unit and to put it into operation treating domestic wastewater. This particular system has been online now for about 60 days and uh, the contract operator that's working for the developers is beyond thrilled. Jimmy Moon, he is the uh, TCEQ licensed operator for this particular facility. And Jimmy was telling me earlier today that uh, he is blown away by the treatment capability uh, that the Averiskia 10K MBR provides. Uh, Jimmy's got 35 years of wastewater operations experience and uh, Jimmy has seen a lot of different wastewater treatment applications over the course of his illustrious career. Jimmy is very, very, very pleased with the simplicity of the operations. The Averiskid 10K MBR system is fully autonomous. We have a master control panel that is operating and monitoring and self-adjusting the treatment system in real time. And then it has our remote access capability where we and our, our process engineers and our back office can log in and can operate and track and, and assist in process operations with uh, Jimmy Moon. This particular system is a very easy to deploy system. It does not require a lot of heavy excavation, does not require a lot of heavy pipe work. It is a fully self-contained advanced treatment system. Because it's modular, we can place a second, a third, or a fourth module in parallel to it and we can double, triple, and quadruple the treatment capability. The system is capable of treating to a level that is suitable for reuse and reclamation. That would include irrigation, toilet reflush, dust control, water features, landscape water features that may be on a project site. That is what uh, this project represents, and uh, we are very, very pleased, very excited about our opportunities here in North Texas. North Texas, from basically the Dallas Metroplex, north to the Oklahoma border, is undergoing an absolute development boom. Major corporations have relocated into North Texas, and that is absolutely driving the need for water and sewer. The localities, they are unable to keep up with it. And so a lot of the developers, especially in this neck of the woods, are turning to solutions like this that allow uh, companies like Modular Water Systems and Progressive Water Treatment, allows us to deliver solutions to them to solve their water and sewer needs. That allows them to tap into the contingent future development value that is with the real estate that is in this, that's located in this region. So check your maps, look at uh, where Denison, Texas and Sherman are located, look at its proximity to Dallas, and just imagine that whole corridor expanding and growing with the influx of development and business and industry and that's relocating to this region. Very, very good. So as I say, we're going to get something from Jamie Moon. We'll get some press releases going. And uh, we also have plans to do the same thing for that other one that we reported on in Moscow, Pennsylvania. And more to come. We have a bunch of these that are coming off the line, which is, I think, high time. All right. So with that, I'm going to share something that I've been saying in emails and stuff like that, and also to press. But I thought you should hear this too. What should you do at home for your water? Well, I shared what we did in our house because it uh, seemed to be a good mix of good quality and low cost. So the first thing we did was we got a whole home ultra filtration system. Now it only filters down to 0 0.02 micron. Now that takes care of things like those plastics, those little tiny plastic particles. The good news about it is zero wastewater. Re reverse osmosis for, for so it depends on the system, but you can have up to five or six gallons of wastewater for every gallon that you purify because it basically has this squeezing thing. There's zero wastewater here. It just filters it through. And uh, the uh, installer came through uh, at the one-year anniversary and didn't even have to change the filter. It was in good shape that way. Here's an example of it. Um, basically, uh, you have simply an ultrafiltration membrane and uh, membrane life up to five years. So it just sits there and does its job. So that's one important element. 
The next one is an under sink reverse osmosis system with an alkaline remineralization filter. Now, there's two things. One is you want to remineralize your water. Why? The RO takes everything out. And you want it to go back to what's called artesian water quality. Artesian means deep in the, in the ground, and that artesian well water has a lot of minerals, and you want that. In addition, we wanted the water to be slightly alkaline, so we actually paid extra for that. And here's an example just off. This is not something that I recommend. I'm not, this is one of many, but it'll show you. The, the big tank is the holding tank for the water. Um, and then on the right are the reverse osmosis uh, unit, which is the blue thing, and then some carbon filters. Very simple, and it remineralizes, as I was saying. So you have mineral water, which is great. And then the next thing is um, a shower head for showering. Why? Because there's particles that, that get past that, that uh, 0.02 micron whole home system that the shower head will get. And here's the one that I use, Pro One Pro Max, and it is very good for those tiny contaminants. And we have to replace that filter once a year. So that's what we did. And uh, the whole thing should be less than $2,000 installed, and you'll want to find a local installer. That way they maintain it. So that gives you the latest and greatest on that. Now, this is an interesting thing. We've been taught that vaccines are, you know, have, have saved public health since the beginning of the 19th century. Sorry, the beginning of the 20th century, but, but also before with smallpox, for example. But let's take a look at what's really happened in terms of time-wise. Every one of these the actual diseases were under control long before the vaccine came along. And uh, you can go to learntherisk.org slash diseases and find out more. So it seems that sanitation and clear water systems are the key. And why is that? Here's Dr. Merrick, who was a conventional medic, and he learned a few things. I was taught that vaccines and vaccination was the most important development, the most important medical intervention ever, that it changed the, the natural history of almost every infectious disease. And we taught this blindly. We never given data to prove it, which just assumed that vaccines are highly effective and very safe and have changed the natural history of, all of almost all of the infectious diseases. But when you actually look at the truth, you know, it's, it's very far from the truth. So if you look at most diseases, measles, mumps, rubella, um, chickenpox, um, almost all of these diseases had declined significantly before the introduction of vaccination. And this is because of simple things as, you know, clean water, sanitation, better hygiene. So those interventions had a much greater effect on um, infectious diseases than vaccination. And to illustrate it, we have in East Palestine, half the CDTC team that went in there got sick, despite the air and water being quote unquote safe. And it tells a story about how it was not a long-term disease, but what they were getting was um, very similar to what the people living there are getting, headaches, sore throats, nasal congestion, et cetera. So here's the point. There's only so much a vaccine can handle, not toxins, not bad food, not contamination, right? You can't vaccinate against what's in East Palestine. Our conclusion is clean water comes first. And we've tended to forget that, that we've really got to focus on the clean water as the first and highest priority. And this is not to say anything good or bad about that vaccines. That's not the topic of this briefing, but they, they're, they're not a cure-all. They, you have to have clean water. Okay, with that, uh, we have an interview at the New York Stock Exchange. As you know, World Water Day, it was the 22nd. I played for you last week some of the interviews and speeches. The next day, we went to the New York Stock Exchange, and this is what showed up on Newsmax. Orange and Clear is doing some innovative and perhaps transformational things with water. With me is Riggs Eckleberry, the CEO, and Kim Berenger, the Executive Vice President. Um, let's just start, we set it up with water. 
It was World Water Day recently, and you did something significant that day. So can you elaborate on that? Yes. Well, the 22nd yesterday was a big day for the world in water. In fact, a lot of UN symposia happening this week as well. But we organized our own event uh, working with New to the Street, where we brought uh, not only Ken and myself, but also our brand ambassador, Estrella Nuri. We spoke to an audience about this amazing trend that's occurring here, which is, as we call it radical decentralization. What does that mean? That means that all the, we used to rely on the big central systems, but because it's been under investment, that's falling apart. And on top of it, we have a boom of deglobalization where companies are coming back to the US, Canada, and Mexico, and that's creating a need. Why? Because nobody's gonna build giant water plants for these returning factories, which are gonna be state of the art, and there's gonna be state of the art water treatment systems integrated with bread. Yeah. So basically what we're used to is like a municipal water, we get our water for but your company decentralizes that. So businesses, even households, I guess, at some point, right, um, could have their own water supply. So explain how, how you do that. How do you provide that? Right. Okay. Um, you, said, you mentioned households. The reason we don't drink our tap water is because 90% of water pollution is coming from the industrial. It's, it's, it's an upstream issue. So the idea is um, we talk about an economic boom. The, the truth is, there's four or five companies that can good manufacture. You know, there, there, right now we have a, an existing um, deficit of a trillion dollars in our water infrastructure. So if the government so chose to write a check for a trillion dollars, which they can do, um, it would take 40 years to replace what's crumbling now. And then, of course, the existing infrastructure would be old. What we're doing is we're saying, look, this is being not polluted at the city. The city, you know, the, it, the infrastructure happens at the city, so it tries to make the water reasonably safe. Where is it being contaminated? It's upstream. It's at the commercial, um, agricultural, and uh, industrial level. So the term that Riggs uses, which I, I really am starting to fall in love with, is co-locate, right? Literally treat the water where it's being made dirty, okay? And also, you're easing the burden of the business, right? But they are paying for it. So the idea is the net downstream effect is the folks that are drinking the water, the folks that really you know don't trust it, are paying less, potentially not even paying anything, right? And you're still providing this really great um, cost savings to a business that's going through a tremendous volume. Yeah. Water to the people. Right, but and and the decaying current system that we have is leading some of these problems, like we see in Flint with the, exactly. the lead issues and things like that. So this would keep the water pure at its location, right? And um, that's what we do. Anytime you have an overloaded system, you do one of two things. You can beef up the system, which is not possible, or you can unburden it. Mm. So we take the, the industrial and agriculture aspect away from it. Now it can serve the people, which are only 10% of the load. It can easily do that. Now, we recently announced that we're doing a crowdfunding for this business, Water On Demand. And, you know, right now, anyone can invest in this coming asset boom. You know, looking at assets right now that are in, in free fall. Banks are up, banks are down, all's up, all's down, no petroleum, whatever, right? Well, this is a brand new asset that's coming into play that is, has not been manipulated, right? It's coming out of government monopoly. And we are there on one side with technology to downsize from the city into these businesses, number one, and number two, enable cap um, financing so that these, uh, as Ken calls it, bulge businesses, the, 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 the bulge bucket, yeah, the bulk of the businesses out there, get it without having to pay up front. And the crowdfunding, I will give you the link even for people to go to, yeah. www.oc.gold slash blue. Yeah. People go to that, they can invest. Yeah, all right, thank you so much, Ken and Rick. Thanks, Dan, thank you, Jane. Thank you. So as you know, this same clip goes to Newsmax, of course, Bloomberg and Fox Business. So, and, it, and there's a lot of a lot of placement on social and other things like that as well. So, with that, um, you know we are keeping it relatively short and sweet today. So I'm going to invite our fabulous panel, Ken and Estrella, to join me. Hello. Hey guys. Hey guys. 
Hey, that was a really great interview. I love that one. We'd been pitching, you know, the day before a lot. And so I think we were kind of in a group. Yeah. Uh, you know what I loved about the you got to talk about Origin Clear and Water on Demand and and really get into the specifics with that interview, which was really awesome. Very good point. It was in depth and it was carried on mainstream media. I know, right? It was a genuinely cool experience to walk through the New York Stock Exchange. And it's it kind of like getting into Fort Knox. I mean, it, it was, you know. Um, oh, really? With oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Like way harder than getting on a on a plane. Yeah, but um, that's good, I guess. Right. Um, yeah, that's great. From, from back in my day, when back in my days, we just walked in. You just walked in. It was just, you know. But um, oh, wow. And everybody was shouting. And everyone was yelling. Right. Yeah. I don't think you could do interviews uh, 20 years ago, 25 years ago from the floor of these things. It was just, it was just, it was absolutely, you know, it was like a, it was like a rave, you know, it was trying to have a conversation during a rave. Um, but um, what, uh, what I liked about this interview was we were able to, um, Jane is a great interviewer because she knows she has. what we want to say. And she's excellent at kind of, teasing it out with with just yes. a brilliant quick question right mm -hmm. um, so uh i i enjoy i enjoy her for that reason um yeah it was a great interview greg allen reeser says did i miss the alpha round with water on demand no um well no. uh there's two things greg if you're accredited you must speak to Ken immediately um and but if you're not you can uh, jump into blue and you will get current private shares and i wish i wish i could talk about what's happening with the um with water on demand on the big picture but that picture is big picture is so confidential i can't even say i can't i can't even say i can't talk about it that's how but that's you how just crazy. did i know anyway oops <laughs> but if they sign an nda they sign an NDA and they get to right. Talk. If you sign an NDA, we can we can speak we can speak in some interesting. We can get we can provide a lot of context to what's going on. What's happening right now? I I you know I wake up every morning going wow. Let's put it that way. I just go wow. And and he and Riggs and I at night sometimes we like if you if I told you five years ago we'd be standing here. Would you? He was like no. <laughs> so it's um we're having fun. I mean it's a lot of work, but um it, it it's a lot of fun. I will tell you, Riggs, um, after watching Dan's interview, yeah. mm. I have a 50-acre lot that's just begging for one of those Avera skits. Yeah, you're going to come back to that. I'm going to do that. I'm going to pull the trigger on that 50 acres. It just Interest rates got so high, the debt service got so you know ridiculous. And guess what? I talked to realtors in the area. You know what, he, you know what they said to me? Take your time. He's never selling it. Wow. He's never going to sell it. Because he wants to sell it to a residential builder. Sure. They cannot mm -hmm. build there. There's all of these, you know, these are all $750,000 homes, groupings, you know, 20, 30, 40, beautiful stuff in, in Murraysville, right? And they're all mm -hmm. surrounding, you know, hills and stuff like that. You would have to get somebody to agree to dig under their entire development and run a sewer pipe for millions of dollars, right? That's not going to happen. No. So, um, one of those Avera skids, I think that's a 10,000 uh, gallon a day, Riggs. So that would accommodate nearly 100 homes. Right. And wow. yeah, he was saying you can parallel gang them up. So that works. No, but I'm saying, I mean, that's 100 homes. I mean, the thing I want to do is like 30, 30 homes. Which would yeah. be like a 5K, for example. Sure. Right. That's super exciting. I, I, I'll do the 10 to leave some room for... Uh, and I want to put in, you know, the crops in the beginning, in the middle and water the crops with a, you know, all that stuff. Um, but th no, that's, um, and it's, it's amazing, Riggs. I think, I think one of the greatest drivers of this revolution will be the rural exurb housing development opportunities that will come up. You know, just, you look at that corridor. Now, people don't realize that corridor is what, 200 miles? Right. Mm. It's about 200 miles and 100 miles wide. I mean, you're talking hundreds of thousands of, of big, big lots could be developed. So um, it, it's I mean, it's, you know, uh, th this is the great we saw inklings of the great escape during COVID. You know, people just fled the cities. And what they've right. done is they've kind of 
they all moved in near me and pissing me off. But um, so, you know, now I got to move out a little bit further. Uh, but it's it's just not practical to do that um, without these, you know, without these residential based uh, solutions. So um, I think not in the, in the very, very near future, Dan's going to start having communications with um, major home builders. Um, there's a there's a major luxury home builder near me called DeCesar and one called Schuster, and they build the million dollar homes in my area. Um, nice. I think having a conversation with these guys and starting to, of course, I want to buy up the land ahead of that. So uh, we'll see what happens. Amazing! Congrats! Yes. Yeah, I'll that's a like, big. Deal. I'll be like Gene Hackman in in Superman. I'll buy up all the all the property before they. Yeah, never mind. <laughs> I uh, go, go really fast. Yeah, I totally get it. So um, bottom line is, you're right. We we haven't been telling yeah. the story enough so that more and more of these reports come out with case studies, with testimonials and so forth. Now, I know one right. very important thing. The 15th of April is the uh, annual report is due. Uh, that is, um, you know, uh, what is that? Looking at That's uh, Saturday. So one more CEO briefing, and then that Saturday, um, now there's a, a week grace period. So it may be any time during that week, the week of uh, Monday, the uh, 17th onward. But uh, I believe that we will report really good numbers. I can't say more than that, but um, it's been really, really, um, it's been going great. And so, you know, on the fundamentals, this company is rocking. Yeah, we're killing it. Um, I, I, I um, and I'll be in New York on the 18th and 19th, and um, we'll be doing we'll be doing more interviewing. And I know someone who lives there now, so uh, you know. <laughs> Very excited about it. Yeah, yeah. Yes. You just wanted to be able to say I'm by coastal. Uh, that's. Just, I mean, that that's, was really 90 yeah. percent of it was yeah I'm by coastal. You know. <laughs> I mean, it's working now. Yeah. <laughs> right. We're excited. We're excited. Oh, thank you. So, so excellent. Well, anyway, thank you. Um, about the last week that was the was the twenty second. The, the whole water. Day. Yes. And looking forward to much more. Um, Absolutely. Uh, anything we want to bring up? I know it's a little bit short, but um, I wanted to give people a break. And uh, no, not- I, I would simply say this. Um, <laughs> Anybody who is looking at the long picture, right? The day-to-day stuff can get, you know, it's enervating, right? I mean, nobody knows that better than me, right? Um, But uh, the day-to-day stuff is enervating, but the long, the the big picture, what we've built and what we are naturally, now we are now finally um, liberating. And and that's what I would say. This opportunity is finally being liberated to a place where it can thrive. If I want to get, you know, if I want to get a little, you know, ephemeral there, right? It's not a very, it's it's not very Wall Street talk. It's a little bit more new agey, right? Um, But the the opportunity has finally been, you know, unshackled. And Mm -hmm. um, it what 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 I think it'll do is I think I think it'll open up the eyes. Like every land developer in the world will go, hold. Holy smokes, how do I right? So it'll it'll start to it'll start to become very viral. All right. And what'll happen is everything attached to this effort, it'll, you know, a, you know, a rising tide raises all boats. So for those of you right. who have supported us all these years, saying, so when is this thing gonna happen? You know, when is this thing gonna work out? I'm gonna say soon. Happening right now. And soon. I think the annual, yes. the annual report will give you that information because it's happening. Yeah. At the end, there is a Zoom. Please do survey. And, all right. Um, guys, now's your chance to sign off. Good night, folks. Uh, Baronara. Call yes. Call him. <laughs> Bye, guys. See ya. Yes, Rella. Happy birthday to you. Thank you so much. Bye.